Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I'm going to show you how to build this modern plywood media console with legs made out of 3 quarter inch electrical conduit on modern builds. To start this project, I got a sheet of 3 quarter inch pine plywood and I broke it down into 3 16 inch wide pieces, although I'm only going to be using 2. Whenever I'm using a circular saw, I like to use a piece of polystyrene insulation as a cutting mat. They're really cheap and reusable. Just one piece of insulation will last me about four months. Then I moved over to the miter saw where I could cut my pieces to length. First, my top and bottom piece at 48 inches. And as you can see, my miter saw couldn't quite cut through it all in one pass. That's why you see me flipping the pieces over. Then I could cut all of my 14 inch pieces, which are all the vertical supports. And whenever you need to cut multiple pieces the same size, you always want to reference and mark using the first piece you cut to reduce cumulative error. Here, you see me using a piece of scrap 3 quarter inch plywood to lay out the lines for all of my vertical supports. Then, I made marks and I drilled holes to recess all of my screw heads. I used a 3 8 inch drill bit to drill halfway through the thickness of the plywood, that way the screws sit below the surface. Then I came back with an 8 inch drill bit to drill the pilot hole through the rest of the plywood. Assembling this main cabinet really was simple. I used wood glue for good long term strength, the screws are really just there to hold it while the glue dries. My big piece of advice here is to start square. It's easy for a cabinet to get really wonky if you aren't constantly coming back with a speed square or something to reference and make sure your pieces aren't getting out of alignment. Next, I added my two vertical spacers that split this cabinet into thirds. And finally, I could add my middle shelf. I didn't cut this piece to size until I had assembled everything else. That way I knew it was going to be a really snug fit. Here, I'm marking the center point of each of my vertical supports. That way I could strike a line across each face of those supports. Then I could drill holes to recess the screws the same way I did on the rest of the cabinet. You all have commonly seen me use a pocket hole drill bit to do this. That's because it drills the pilot hole along with the hole to recess the screw at the same time. Now that I had everything screwed together, I needed to plug up all of those holes and I'm using some 3 8 inch flat plug dowels that you can pick up at Home Depot. In fact, I'll have an Amazon link in the description. The ones I chose were oak. After that, I came back and sanded the whole cabinet up to 220 grit, ready for finish. Really quickly, before moving on, I'd like to give a huge thanks to this video sponsor, a company I love, Squarespace. Squarespace is the one-stop shop to build your own website. And the best thing is, you need no website building experience. Squarespace's built-in designer templates look amazing right out of the box, but they're super easy to customize as well. You can start by arranging different blocks of text in image galleries to create your own custom layout. Then you can go even further by customizing the fonts and color schemes of your site. The Modern Builds website started on Squarespace long before they were a sponsor and I personally recommend them all the time to my friends and colleagues. So to learn more and to build your own Squarespace site, make sure and follow the link down in the description, squarespace.com forward slash modern builds. And don't forget, use the code modern builds at checkout for 10% off your first Squarespace site. Thanks Squarespace. To make the legs for this console, I'm going to be using this tool. It is a 3 quarter inch EMT electrical conduit bender. My plan initially was to get some 3 quarter inch copper pipe and use this to bend a radius to create the legs. But it failed miserably. The copper was way too brittle and the walls were way too thin that it just immediately snapped. So then I thought I could add a little bit of heat and maybe help it bend easier, but it just crinkled and folded under the pressure of this tool. Thankfully though, as a fallback, I still picked up some 3 quarter inch electrical conduit, so we're going to try that. Before bending anything, I made a mark every inch along the conduit. That way I knew where to start my bend, this time at 2 inches, as well as how it would affect the conduit overall. Alright, fingers crossed that this goes well. Oh wow! Okay, so I overbent it, and looking at how it bent, I realize now I don't need to start at two inches, I need to start at one. So I'm just gonna cut this piece off, I'm gonna try one more time. 
So just like before, I made marks at every inch along the conduit, then I could make my bend, making sure to keep a lot of pressure on the foot peg. This time I was careful not to overbend it, my thinking being I would rather bend it two or three times than to overbend it on the first try. Oh yeah. Okay, so what I found by making these marks is that my bend starts nine inches from the edge of my conduit, but the radius of the bend adds five inches beyond that bend in length. Just to make sure we're on the same page, I measured 40 inches from the end of our bend. That's this mark right here. Then I subtracted five inches, and this is where the bend should start because over the length of nine inches, five more inches will be added. That'll bring us back to 40 and we'll be perfect. So I'm gonna cut my pipe right here. Now, if all of this is still a little confusing, don't worry. I made PDF plans which are available on my website linked in the description that goes into this in further detail. Check that out. All right, so now I just gotta try and duplicate this. So, fingers crossed. One thing to keep track of is where your first bend is when you bend your second. You wanna make sure that it's perpendicular to the floor so that each of your bends are square. My two pieces were not identical, but they were really close. From there, I got my circular saw back out and I cut a 44 by 12 inch piece that I'm gonna be referencing as the plate for the legs. It'll attach to the bottom of the cabinet and it's what I'll use to connect the conduit legs to the rest of the piece. After marking all of the locations, I used a three quarter inch Forstner bit that had just a little bit of wiggle room to drill holes that the conduit will set into. Once I knew everything fit, I masked off the ends so that I could paint everything with a few coats of flat white paint from Rust-Oleum. After the paint cured overnight, I got some Gorilla 5-Minute Epoxy to attach the legs permanently to the plate. Like I mentioned, the conduit legs have a tiny bit of wiggle room inside of the holes that I drilled. And by using epoxy, I was able to put a lot of adhesive where these pieces are going together. And to make sure the legs were at the exact same height from the plate, I used seven three-quarter inch plywood spacers. Once the epoxy had time to cure, I centered the plate on the bottom of the console and screwed everything down. The last step was to get some Maker Brand Simple Finish with wax and apply two coats to this cabinet. This is one of the flagship products from my company, Maker Brand, and you can find it linked in the description. All you have to do is apply two coats, letting them sit for about 15 minutes, then wipe off all of the excess. So overall, this probably isn't my favorite project I've ever built, but I love how clean and consistent these conduit legs came out. If you have any cool ideas on how to incorporate these into other projects, I'd love to hear. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a ton of fun to be able to experiment like this. Even though I wasn't able to get this project done with copper pipe, I still love the way it came out. In hindsight, since this conduit does bend at such a long radius, I would do this project over a longer span. This is a four foot cabinet, and I think these legs would look really great if they were stretched out over a six foot long cabinet, especially. Now don't forget, if you wanna learn more or build this project for yourself, I have downloadable PDF templates on my website linked in the description. The a cut list, a 3D model, and some helpful tips to get you started. In fact, I even included plans for a six foot long cabinet just like this one. I wanna give one more huge thanks to Squarespace. You guys that watch to the end of this video know that they have sponsored my channel for a long time. They're an amazing company, they have an incredible product, and I couldn't be a bigger fan. And what's amazing is they offer a free trial. You can literally build your entire website before you even sign up. And once you do, just make sure and use the code MODERNBUILDS and get 10% off. Other than that, if you're not already, make sure and click that subscribe button down below and even hit that notification bell if you haven't seen my videos popping up in your subscriptions feed. If you've got any questions or comments, make sure and leave those below. And don't forget, follow me on Instagram. I would really appreciate it. So thanks again, guys, and we'll see you next time on Modern Builds.